All right, guys, welcome back to another episode of the Fairly Lame Podcast. As always, my name is Dom, and this is your home of good environmental news from all around the world. This is episode 62, and before we get into today's topics, I I want to give a big shout-out to a couple people um, who have been sending through some great stories over on Instagram. Apologies if I uh, pro- pronounce these names wrong, um, but the first one is... Ambra, A-M-B-R-A, again, apologies, Uh, and the second one is Alejandro, I'm pretty sure I got that one right, Um, but yeah, just want to thank you guys and everyone else who has been sending in some good environmental news, because I think I said this last week, and maybe the last few weeks, but it honestly helps so much, because like I said, there's so many different bloody news sources, different websites, Instagram pages that I just don't even know exists, um, and in all sorts of languages too, so having you guys help out um, not only makes my job a whole lot easier, but also, um, you know, helps all the other listeners as well, because they get, you, you help spread the hope, spread the joy, and um, yeah, help spread the good news, so thank you for those two in particular, but honestly, everyone else as well, um, and yeah, so my Instagram is just at fairly lame underscore, I'm assuming if you listen to the podcast, you're probably following over there, because uh, I don't know how you'd find out about this without it, um, but yeah, so anyway, uh, we'll just get straight into it uh, with a quick little overview of the stories I've got for you guys today. So first up, we'll have a look at America's biggest solar panel recycling facility and how they're able to make recycling solar panels profitable. Then New York's Fresh Kills Park, which honestly has to be one of the worst names for a park. Imagine sending your kids to go off and play at Fresh Kills Park. Anyway, it used to be the world's largest garbage dump, but it's now been completely transformed into an urban oasis. Then we'll have a look at the latest project from Colossal Biosciences, who are the company behind bringing back the dodo, woolly mammoth, and Tasmanian tiger. And finally, we'll learn about how plastic bottle caps are being transformed into things called buddy benches to help kids make friends at school and reduce anxiety in the playground. And before we get into it, just a super quick reminder that all of the links and like source info and whatnot that I base all of these, uh, I guess, stories from are linked down below. So if you want to check them out, do some further reading um, or anything like that, make sure to check that out. Um, But yeah, let's get straight into it. So the first story we're having a look at today is about We Recycle Solar's massive solar panel recycling facility in the United States, which so far has been able to reuse over 500,000 of them and divert 23 million pounds of resources from landfill. So globally, we've installed a bit more than one terawatt of solar, and to reach our climate targets, it's looking like this number will have to be closer to 75, and as all those panels do have a lifespan, being able to recycle as many of them as possible is going to be crucial. And so that is where we recycle solar come in. Their enormous facility may have just opened a couple months ago, but their system has already proven to be super effective at giving panels a second life. The company is paid by people to come and remove their old panels, and as their teams undergo special training to do this, they're able to reduce the amount that are broken during the decommissioning process by 30%. And you might be wondering why break-even matters if they're just going to be crushed up and recycled anyway. Well, we recycle solar actually resell about 60% of the panels they collect for a substantial discount to get as much use out of them as possible. But when the panels do finally stop working, they're put through machines which crash them up and separate out all the different materials to be resold and reused, and the original owner of the panels gets a cut of the profit. So about 15% of the panel is aluminium, which is just sold as scrap metal, so most of the value comes from the copper and silver parts. However, they also resell the glass as sandblasting material to recycle as much of them as possible. By 2030, the market value of these recycled components is expected to be $2.7 billion, but by 2050, that number could get as high as $80 billion. The next bit of good news that I've got for you guys is from New York, where the city is transforming what was once the world's biggest garbage dump into a massive new park, and Phase 1 has just opened to the public. So Fresh Kills was originally a wetland before it was used as a dump, and back then the plan was just to do it for a couple of years and then turn it into a new housing development, but as the city grew the garbage just kept coming and at one point it was receiving 29,000 tonnes of it per day. And after all of that damage, you can imagine how difficult it would be to rehabilitate this land to a point where it's safe for humans, but as the process was started back in 2001, we're now getting to see some of the results. 
So the first milestone on the journey was the completion of the Owl Hollow soccer field back in 2013, followed by the new Springville bicycle route that opened two years later. And now after 22 years, the first stage of the public park is open for visitors, and in 2036, when all the other stages are complete, it will end up being three times the size of Central Park. And it's not just humans that are benefiting, as already a diverse array of wildlife like ospreys, hawks and foxes have returned to the area, as well as rare birds that haven't been seen in the city for decades. But it doesn't stop there, as they also have a massive gas collection system that sucks in the gases from the rubbish and takes it away to be converted into biofuel, which is sold to local homes for cooking and heating. Now, if you've listened to the podcast for a while, you'd know that Colossal Biosciences is the company behind bringing back uh, the dodo, woolly mammoth and Tasmanian tiger. Well, they just announced that their latest project is to help secure Australia's and potentially the world's most endangered reptile. So after having its habitat taken over by animal agriculture and facing a heap of pressure from cats and foxes, the Victorian grassland earless dragon completely disappeared. However, that all changed in July when one individual was found at a top secret location near Melbourne, which upon further inspection was found to be home to another 15. And so those 16 are the only ones in safe care, and for all we know, they could literally be the last 16 of their entire species. So to help safeguard them, Colossal has announced a partnership with Zoos Victoria to build them a quarantine breeding centre at the zoo. And this is a massive deal as they're the first species to receive support through the company's Lost Species initiative. The aim of the program is to use the technologies that Colossal is developing to bring back animals that have been missing for hundreds of years to protect those that are still here, but might not be if we keep doing what we're doing. So on top of the new centre, another key component is to sequence the lizard's genome to allow conservationists to better understand the history of the species and predict how it will be impacted by climate change. And finally, the last story that I've got for you guys is extremely wholesome, as it's about how plastic bottle caps are being turned into things called buddy benches to help kids make friends at school and reduce anxiety in the playground. So the idea for them actually came from a different project, which is also absolutely incredible, called Envision Hands, which uses the same lids to make prosthetic limbs for child amputees. When Envision started receiving more donations than they could process, the team didn't want to turn people away and risk them losing the habit of saving up and donating the bottle caps, and buddy benches were the perfect way to work through the stockpile. Each bench is made from 15,000 bottle caps and their goal is to produce and install one every week until there's a buddy bench in all of the early childhood facilities in Canberra. In the schools, the benches are helping to create a more inclusive playground where if a kid is feeling left out, can't find their friends or needs to make new ones because they've just had their Pokemon cards stolen, they can sit on the bench and by the sounds of it, other kids are racing up to get them involved. And so obviously you won't be able to see this if you're listening uh, audio only, so highly recommend checking out the clip that comes out about this over on Instagram. But these benches almost look like they've started to melt out in the sun, uh, but that's actually a design feature as the texture gives the kids something to fidget with and explore with their hands to help them calm down. And if you're in Australia and want to get involved, check out the Lids for Kids website that I've left down below. Um, but if you're not, either comment if you're watching on YouTube or if you're audio only, let me know on Instagram and I'll share it through to people. Um, let me know if you know of anything like this where you are so people can support it. So guys, that's all the good news I could squeeze in for this week's episode. Again, thank you for tuning in. And uh, yeah, so next week, the quality will be getting better. I have um, the big announcement, which I definitely overhyped, was that um, I've just purchased uh, pretty much a completely different, uh, completely brand new audio, I don't know what you call it, system, whatever. Um, so yeah, hopefully it's a lot better quality because I'm sure half of you don't know what the hell I'm saying half the time. Even sometimes when I'm editing, I, I just have to sit there and think, what did you just say? Um, but yeah, hopefully any chance to you know make this good news more accessible, um, yeah, I'll try to bring it to you guys. Um, so yeah, stay tuned for that. And as always, keep sending through your good environmental news. And yeah, that will do us. Have a good rest of the day. Drive to work, whatever the hell you're doing. We'll see you guys next week. See ya.